Hello, everyone. Thanks for taking time to attend today's presentation. ASAP Accounting and Payroll is pleased to present resources on health insurance. And with open enrollment upon us, we hope to give you some insight to help you make some informed decisions. In terms of this topic and today's presentation, this is actually part of a series focused on raising the bar on employee benefits. And a big component of employee benefits is health insurance. So we're unpacking this into a few different webinar chapters to give you insight into this ever-changing and often confusing area. And uh, today's webinar is actually sponsored by ASAP Accounting and Payroll. And we provide um, bookkeeping and payroll processing services we started in 1990 in Telluride, Colorado, and we now have three regional offices, Telluride, Durango, and Denver. And we aim to make accounting as simple as possible. That's what ASAP stands for in our world. And really our goal is to get um, our clients back to what they love doing, and that might be hiking, biking, skiing, especially in Colorado, um, or focusing on their business. And with that, I am excited to introduce today's pre presenters and our topic. And I have two excellent professionals with us from the health insurance arena. We have Ken Bates and Renee Loringer with us from Durango Insurance Professionals. And when it comes to health insurance, the professionals at Durango Insurance have been taking care of business and families in Southwest Colorado since February of 2003. They represent more than 30. 3,500 individuals as well as many um, employer groups in the region. Ken Bates is the owner of Durango Insurance Professionals and has 30 plus years in the health insurance sector. He is sure seen many changes during his tenure in this industry. Renee Loringer has a very consultative approach to serving customers and specializes not only in group plans but in alternative independent options as well. Alongside her work with Durango Insurance Professionals, she's a representative with U.S. Health Advisors. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to our presenters. Thanks, Diane. We do want to address the healthcare landscape for 2019. Um, having done this business for many, many years, uh, every year seems to be more challenging as insurance gets more complex, more confusing, and we all know more expensive. For 2019, here on the Western Slope, we do have the same two carriers that primarily have been doing business for over the last 25 to 30 years here in Southwest Colorado. Those two carriers are primarily going to be Anthem Blue Cross Blue Shield and Rocky Mountain Health Plans. And many of you know Rocky Mountain Health Plans was purchased last year by United Healthcare. So they are now a United Healthcare company, but they'll still continue under their current Rocky Mountain health plans. So before we get into that, though, um, we've uh, had a location here in Durango for, uh, as Diane said earlier, 15 years. And um, being here in Durango, it's given us the ability to go out all throughout Southwest Colorado to meet with employer groups and uh, share what's available to them in the small group as well as the large group arena. So as I said, uh, Anthem, Blue Cross Blue Shield, Rocky Mountain Health Plans are the two primary go-tos. Group market, which would be 100 plus. There's uh, many more options such as third-party administrators and companies like United Healthcare, Aetna, Cigna, and of course, Anthem. So large group, 100 plus employees. Most large group employers go down the path of self-funding or partially self-funding because the, the volume of premium they can generate from the number of employees that they have in the group. But most small group employers, and that would be employers with one to 99 employees, most small group employers will go to the route of fully insured, especially if they're a small employer with 15 or fewer employees. So we do large group, small group. Uh, we do other ancillary products, which we'll get to in, in just a moment. Um, large group, as I said, 100 plus employees. Small group, one to 99. And I wanna focus on small group 
for a little bit here because most of our employers here in Southwest Colorado are small group employers. Um, as I said a few moments ago, fully insured is what most small employers that have 15 or less in uh, the direction they'll go. But uh, we'll also get into a little bit on uh, level funding as well and talk about what that entails. Uh, carriers that we work with here on the Western Slope, again, Anthem, Rocky Mountain, Cigna, Aetna, United Healthcare. Um, as I said a few minutes ago, Anthem and Rocky continue to be the go-to for small group markets here in Southwest Colorado. Uh, United Healthcare is showing more and more interest. And as I said earlier, Rocky Mountain Health Plans is now owned by United Healthcare. So that kind of concept with, uh, with two carriers that are under one roof that we have access to, to quote, small group employers. Uh, new for 2019 is a product mountain health plans. It'll be called the Rocky Mountain Canyon plan. And this is an HMO plan that has two tiers based on your location of services. Now this plan here is not groups outside of Southwest Colorado, but is limited to, to five counties um, here in our region, which would be La Plata County, uh, Montezuma, Archuleta, Dolores, and San Juan County. It's a two-level coverage product where by staying within the network of those four or five counties, um, you would have lower deductibles, lower co-pays. If you seek out medical services in tier two, which would be the rest of the state, um, you do have a higher deductible. But there again, with managed care being more and more predominant in our area, Rocky is wanting to channel employees into using a designated network here in Southwest Colorado to help control medical cost. So Rocky Mountain Canyon, really good fit for Southwest Colorado. For other areas on the Western Slope, uh, we use the Rocky Mountain Range plan. Rocky Mountain Range is similar to the Canyon, but the network is much greater. So if you're in San Miguel County or some of the other counties um, on the Western Slope, the Rocky Mountain Range plan is gonna be a better fit, obviously, than the uh, Rocky Mountain Canyon plan. Uh, both our HMO, both um, direct you into a network of Rocky providers throughout the state. Um, the real great advantage here is that if you go outside the state of Colorado, you do have United Healthcare's extended network. So even though it's a Rocky Mountain product, um, they use the United Healthcare network throughout the rest of the country. So um, Rocky Mountain Canyon, great fit for employers in Southwest Colorado for the regions that I mentioned earlier, but for the rest of the Western Slope, uh, the Rocky Mountain Range Plan uh, would be the go-to plan for, uh, for healthcare coverage for small employers. I just wanted to jump back a couple slides only because, um, you know, we want to really kind of uh, encircle everything that we do specialize in. Obviously, in the large groups and the small groups, you know, small group is our largest market, but we really want to impress that the fact that, you know, to cover everything, we do specialize in several other ancillaries. Dental, obviously we use dental, uh, Delta Dental and MetLife Vision. We have VAS, VSP and UHC. We do life um, on a group level. We also offer disability. Short term is very prevalent. Um, accident, we do have a um, team that we work with here in the local area that is um, very awesome in their region. Um, we do offer in our office Medicare. We do have a lot of groups where when they're transitioning transitioning out of um, their group product, um, they need to go um, 65 years and above. We use Anthem and AARP 
um, and United. Um, and also in our office, we do offer individual and family. Um, and in the state of Colorado, it's just Anthem and Friday. And then we do offer short-term medical um, for people that sometimes come off. They need a coverage to get them through to their next coverage. So let me pop back forward so we can get into our HSA plans that we use. And um, HSA is a health savings account, and it allows you to use tax-free dollars to pay for qualified medical expenses. And a lot of our employers with high deductible plans are finding that to be a valuable solution to help with cost. Um, it can be set up at any local bank or financial institution. And um, in the Western Slope, we do see high deductible plans um, more prevalent than we do on our local, you know, uh, locally than we do um, lower deductible plans. So we do um, encourage using the HSAs. Um, the single coverage for 2019 uh, is a little higher than this, but for 2018 we're at 3450, and families can contribute up to 6900, and then additional thousand per year if you're 55 and up. It's actually gone up a little bit since then for the, the new 2019 numbers. I think it's an extra additional uh, two to four hundred dollars per each one. Um, but to use a health savings account, it has to be used for qualified expenses like prescription drugs and your doctors, your chiropractors, dentists. Um, it can be used for anything on a medical based level. And um, as I said, again, it's an awesome way to use tax-free dollars to pay for your qualified medical expenses. Okay. So on an in, on employer, you know, ACA mandate level, we're starting to notice that there's, you know, a lot of changes that have happened over the last few years where, um, you know, employers are having to make some serious uh, decisions if they have 50 or more, if they want to stay smaller and be under 50 to not be ACA mandated. ACA mandate is the Affordable Care Act, and the mandates are if you have 50 or more employees, you're required to provide an affordable health insurance program to your employees. And, you know, being said, um, a lot of companies here in our area are trying to stay under the 50 because, you know, obviously the costs are high, but we help educate some of those companies at looking at like Caseras, where it's a qualified small employer health reimbursement arrangement. It's an HR, HRA for qualified small employers for people under 50. So if they're really trying to look at something like if they're with 20 or 30 employees and they do want to offer some programs, it helps them to um, have better options rather than always looking at a group product that might not be a good fit for them. So with a Casera, it's medical funds given pre-tax for employees to spend on medical expenses, including their health care premiums, ancillary coverage, and more. So what it is, is you're actually giving your employee um, a certain amount of pre-tax dollars that they can offer um, and use um, each month towards their outside coverages that they have. With the ACA mandates and penalties going away, a lot of people are choosing to be able to shop, you know, for insurances on their own. And if they're not going to offer a group, and if you do have a Casera, you cannot offer a group medical coverage. It gives them the option to shop where they like and use those medical dollars um, that they're given through this health reimbursement for the things that are needed. Okay, let's talk a little bit about individual and family coverage uh, going forward for 2019. Uh, here in the Western Slope, uh, we have two choices for individual coverage through the Affordable Health Care Act. Uh, Anthem Blue Cross Blue Shield, which has been a player in this market for the last several years. And we have a new carrier, uh, fairly new uh, to the Western Slope, it's Friday Insurance. They are our other option that's available uh, through the marketplace. So individuals or families can purchase health insurance through the marketplace, which is Connect for Health, and they may qualify for a tax subsidy based on their household income. Um, many individuals have qualified for the, uh, the subsidy through the exchange, and Anthem and Friday are your two choices for individual plans here in Southwest Colorado. Um, U.S. Health is a private sector insurance, and it is an underwritten um, policy that you do have to qualify for at a preferred rate. And we also have MediShare, which is Christian Sharing Ministry, and you do, it's faith-based, and you do have to belong as a member. So as we, you know, see the individual family shared responsibility penalty is going away in January 2019, which is giving um, small groups um, larger choices on making, you know, either group 
or um, providing HRAs to um, provide individual insurance. I'd like to back up to, to the small group market and uh, I just want to talk a little bit more. I, I did give you some information on Rocky Mountain Health Plans, but I also want to talk a little bit uh, too about what some of the other options are. Um, Rocky Mountain may not be the best fit for small employers. And I do want to mention Anthem Blue Cross Blue Shield. Uh, they have a Western Slope product called Mountain Enhanced. And uh, it has done very well competing price-wise with Rocky Mountain Health Plans. Like Rocky, it is similar to an HMO network where you are um, channeled into a list of providers that you have to be using in order to uh, access the plan. But uh, Anthem does have not only Mountain Enhanced uh, HMO products, they also have Pathway, which uh, gives you more freedom throughout the state uh, as far as providers. And then they have their traditional Anthem PPO product, which allows you to not only access providers here in Colorado, but uh, nationwide as well. Obviously, with the freedom of the PPO plan, the cost uh, for that product is going to be uh, quite a bit higher than the HMO network. But uh, Anthem continues to have a strong presence on the Western Slope, and we're fortunate to have Anthem consistently year after year after year competing with Rocky Mountain Health Plans. Um, if we were on the front range, we would have a choice of several other competitive carriers, but uh, one of the drawbacks to the Western Slope is we have uh, very few health insurance carriers to choose from. So for small group, Rocky Mountain Health Plans, Anthem, Blue Cross Blue Shield. Okay, so we're gonna jump forward and um, talk a little bit about Medicare. Let me get there. So turning 65, um, you're gonna be eligible for Medicare the first of the month that you turn 65. And um, you're automatically enrolled in Part A, which is your hospital coverage. Part B, you have to acknowledge that you want Part B, which is uh, outpatient coverage. Um, Part B does come with a premium per month of $133. If you have a substantial income, um, your Part B premium could be much higher than the $133 per month. Uh, Part A, there is no cost. Part B, as I said, $133. What most uh, people do when they turn 65, is they go out and select a Medicare supplement. Uh, part A and Part B of Medicare do have deductibles. Part B also only covers 80%. Uh, therefore, you'd purchase a Medicare supplement to pick up the additional 20% that Part B does not cover. Uh, the two supplements that we lean towards are AARP United Healthcare, the other one being Anthem, Blue Cross, Blue Shield. Those are the two most popular Medicare supplements on the marketplace today, primarily because of the cost. They're very competitive cost-wise. They both also offer silver sneakers, which would allow you to have gym membership uh, to work out facilities uh, for no cost at all. So for Medicare supplements, Anthem, Blue Cross, Blue Shield, AARP United Healthcare. Okay, so obviously we have a lot of self-employed or small business um, under 50 that are trying to do some new options. And um, being that the penalties have gone away on an individual side, it still leaves small employers with the idea of, I don't offer group health insurance, but I'd still want the ability to offer something health related to help offset medical costs. We do have HRAs. And with HRAs, it gives um, employers the option of giving a select amount that they wanna offer their employees to use towards premiums outside of a group product, like going to the marketplace or going to a MediShare or a US Health plan. So with US Health, just to give a quick idea, it is an underwritten policy. Um, Secure Advantage is our um, go-to. Um, you can lock in at this point in time for a three-year rate. It's amazing, affordable health coverage. And it is part of an association group plan, which is where you get the amazing rates. 
So, and they also do through at once, they do everything um, under the sun when it comes to ancillaries on an individual level. So if a small group employer does choose to give an HRA of a certain amount of money and that employee decides that he wants to go and um, purchase a U.S. health plan and also have those additional ancillaries, it's not, you know, several stop shopping. It's a one um, option situation and this is a little bit about the health coverages so that you can get a better understanding um, that they do offer other additional things but with that being said we want to be able to let people know in our rocky mountain area that we have that we do offer um, many options for small group and large group here in the area and between ken and i and durango insurance and ourselves we want to make sure that we are a resource Great, thanks. And I have a I have a couple questions. Well, I have one big one, and um, could you touch more specifically on the Kusera and how um, a business would go about setting that up, and and kind of a, a little bit of the highlights there. That seems like a really powerful tool for, for small businesses. Yeah, Kusera's are awesome. Qualified small business employers um can basically set up it's an hra it is set up on a managed level through a cpa or even a private company and what a casera will do is you cannot offer a group health insurance so it is a choice that a small business owner under 50 mind you because of the ACA mandate 50 and above have to offer an affordable group but under 50 they can say we want to be able to still provide our employees with the option of having something health related that we're benefit to bring them a benefit that they can use and with that casera they can say we want to offer each one of our employees um, across the board $300. With that being said, and that being managed by their CPA, they'll have a separate account that will hold that money. And as each employee proves they have a medical cost or a premium, they can draw from that on pre-tax dollars for the employer and the employee to be able to pay those outside medical costs. And most employers with the Casera, it's a pretty easy setup, an easy fix, and it is managed. So the dollars which are um, used to, to set up in this account, if an employee chooses not to use those dollars, they're kind of a use or lose. If you choose that you're going to buy a separate plan or be on a spouse's plan outside, from using those Casera dollars, um, the employer is not penalized and the money would just stay into the account. Awesome. And um, you mentioned the word qualified a couple times. What doesn't it what does a business have to do to get qualified? Or were those stipulations just the point of becoming qualified? It's it's basically due on what they're going to, um, like being under 50 employees for one, not offering a group insurance, being set up on an HRA plan that is accurately managed, it's not just something they made up, um, and also having the correct amount of employees and how you list the employees because they can't segregate between um, which employee gets a certain amount of money to pay or another employee. So management can't have um, 400 and another employee have 200. To qualify, you have to offer the same amount across the board. Gotcha, that makes sense. Um, and then Ken, you talked about the range plan being an, an option for some of the businesses and the other counties um, that the Canyon is not specific on. Um, Anything to mention there or uh, touch on for those people listening in from those other counties like San Miguel County or Montrose or Ure County? Yeah, um, that's where the uh, Anthem Mountain Enhanced Plan would work well for those areas, as well as Rocky Mountain's other HMO plan, which would be the Rocky Mountain Range. And one of the areas where we didn't spend a lot of time, but we've had a lot of success is with level funding Level funding is a fairly new concept for the small group market. Um, if a group, a small group, one to 99 employees, is uh, fairly healthy, um, they might want to take advantage of partially self-funding. And partially self-funding will typically start at 15 employees or more. 
But if you're fairly healthy, employee-based, um, you can go level funding. Level funding would be provided through Cigna, United Healthcare, Anthem, or Aetna. Those are your, th your four main carriers that uh, will do level funding. And it gives the employer an opportunity to have a set rate every month and then at the end of the year, and at the end of the contract year, if they've had a good year claims-wise, uh, they have the opportunity to actually get money back from that specific carrier that they've chosen. So we don't want to overlook level funding. It's a really, really good option for those employers that have north of 15 employees, and they have a fairly healthy-based employer employee group. So I want to mention that because uh, uh, another uh, area where an employer can enroll in a group health plan and, and have uh, an opportunity to get money back at the end of the year. And also too, real quick, um, Diana, you had mentioned, you know, like the differences between the Rocky Mountain Canyon and the range. One of the things that um, is awesome about this is, yes, Western Slope wise, we do have incredible differences between like front, you know, front range, you know, Denver area, Telluride, and even here, um, you're right. It's it's basically our marketplace and the cost of in within our physicians network and how everything yeah. is accessed. So what we try to do is we try to look at um, by counties what is the best fit. Obviously, in this close range, um, you know, Canyon works best in those outside um, areas, the counties that you had mentioned. The range has a better fit and better provider um, network. Um, and that's kind of how Rocky Mountain does set up. They do have an exclusive network. So what they do is they really look at the different areas and how their marketplace works and their physician network and what would be best to provide for that area, which I think is really awesome how Rocky Mountain does that. And Anthem also does the same thing with like Mountain Enhanced and Pathway. Um, they have the same kind of situation where they look at how our um, cost effectiveness is because we are surrounded in this area by so many borders and out of network and you know mountain passes the access and ability we they really have gone out of their way to create those um, exclusive networks between the two and it sounds like the nice part about Rocky Mountain health plans is that you have access to the United Healthcare network too did I hear Absolutely. that right Absolutely. Yeah, yep. absolutely. They were purchased this year, which brings you up on a large nationwide plan. That's great. Well, thank you guys so much. Um, I will share my closing slide here. And um, you brought up a lot of great points today. And uh, we're really excited to see some kind of new options coming into the fold. So thank you guys so much. We appreciate you taking the time out of your day and, and wish you guys luck on, uh, on the open enrollment too. And hopefully this helps uh, give people some more information to come in with more questions and, and have a little bit more as they approach their conversations with you. Thank you so much. Thank, we appreciate thank you, it.